Okay, afternoon everybody. Welcome back to Coffee and Art in the Morning, part two. And uh, I had a request on YouTube to show art journal books and collage books. So before I hit record, I pulled a lot of books. And so if you were one that wanted to see these two books, I did not pull drawing books, type books, calligraphy books, painting books, um, clip art. I mean, I've got different categories. I didn't pull all those. I just tried to pull things that are on art journal, a couple on book making, a few samples. And if I have time, I'll even throw in some Nick Bantock samples if I get through all of these. So uh, I'm going to try to get through, I think I pulled about 40 books. So obviously I'm not going to get in depth. If y'all have any questions in chat, this is a live chat guys. So, so if you're watching the recording, there are live people here. Well, yeah, obviously live people. But anyway, so I'm talking to people while we're here. All right. So I'm Dee Dee, by the way. I don't know if I said that. So these are kind of the more current books on art journaling and collage type books. And I'm going to start with these. Now, a lot of my books are hardback books because I've had them since they first came out. And they probably are available in softback now. So double check when you go look on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or wherever you do your book shopping. Hi, Cheney! And um, yeah. so some of them are older. Some of them are maybe five years ago, ten years ago. So they're just different. I didn't go by the age of the books. Now, there are a few new, new books out. I did buy a couple like on the map making, journaling, and some other things that I didn't pull right now. But I tried to keep it just what was requested. All right. So, the first thing, if you are wanting to do any kind of art journaling or collaging, and most of us that do both, combine both, we do art journaling and collage. So let me just quickly pick this book up. Now for me, I don't do a lot of writing in my journals. I just do the artwork. A lot of people combine the two. I keep them separate. I have separate books for writing and separate books for art journaling. But I'll just do a couple of pages here. This is my current art journal and collage. So this is a combination of, of journal, you know, art... I have stories to tell, but with pictures, not words. But it's collage and mixed media. So just so you can kind of see the type of work that I do with mixed media and collage, this is some of it in this book. Just a quick little partial flip through. This, I believe this is on a, a recording already. All right. So <clears throat> these are the best magazines. If you are interested in just picking up a magazine and trying art journaling or collage. Somerset Studio, these are the two most recent issues, um, is all about the art of paper and mixed media. So I won't go through these. I have different shows where I've already done flip throughs and talked about them. But they are mixed media and collage. And they, uh, the Somerset Studios and all these... Uh, Stampington publications usually have like sample papers inside that you can cut out, tear out. It's like cardstock weight, and you're supposed to take those out and use them. I really don't tear up my summer sets. I think I have every summer set except maybe a couple of issues um, that I, I missed. But other than that, I, ever since they started, I believe in 1996 or 98, I don't remember. But this is my favorite mixed media magazine, Somerset Studio. <clears throat> they also publish art journaling. And this is all about art journaling. And it comes out, I believe now, it used to be just quarterly. Now I think it's, might still be, I'm not sure, four times a year. Uh, I, it says autumn. So yeah, I guess it comes out, this is still coming out four times a year. Now, it used to just come out, I think, twice a year. So yeah of a coffee every now and then and uh, it's published by the same people that do Somerset they have probably 30 different magazines on every kind of creativity there is um, let me just kind of see if I have right here here's a few of the ones they have they have, they have uh, 
Somerset Memories, which is a scrapbooking. They have the art journaling. They have artful blogging. Somerset Life. They have jewelry. They have altered how to make altered garments. They have stamping, handbags, another stamping, art dolls, the studio gallery, another jewelry, where women create, green craft, the art of business, holiday sewing, and the artist cafe, just to name a few. And I think there's even more than that. So they have like every kind of creative endeavor that you could possibly want in a magazine. So this one is art, art journaling. If y'all have any questions, put a Q and a colon. So I know y'all are um, asking me a question in the, in the live chat. Okay. So um, in the art journaling, they have, um, uh, they have, let me go ahead and say this too. Somerset Studio Art Journaling and all their publications are reader submitted projects. They do have specialty artists that are like, I don't want to say they're on staff, but they're regular contributors to the different magazines. But they rely on people uh, submitting their projects uh, to them for publication. And that's the majority of their examples and step outs and demos and all that are by projects that people have submitted. So if you're interested in any of those kind of things and you want to check out all the different Somerset publications, no, I don't work for them. No, I'm not published in them. <laughs> I just wanted to, I, I, I'm real big on shouting out other artists and and books, magazines, anything creative, I'm, I'll give a shout out to anybody. You know, I just, I, I love promoting art and artists. And so, you know, we usually have links open here. And if y'all are watching this on YouTube, if you ever want to come over and chat live, uh, my Ustream show is Coffee and Art in the Morning, or just put in Dee Dee Willingham and you'll be able to find me. Most Monday mornings I'm live, although I'm live at other times, but if you subscribe to my channel, Chances are, not every person, but chances are you'll get an email when I go live and then you can come and chat with everybody. Okay, so um, it's just tons of different kind of examples because there are so many different submissions. Everybody's work is different and so there's just a ton of different kind of uh, work. So these would be the two main magazines I would recommend if you've never art journaled, never collaged, uh, mixed media, or paper arts, these two, along with cloth, paper, scissors. Cloth, paper, scissors is put out by, um, hang on guys, I have to try to remember who puts it out. Uh, I just know it is CPS, so but that's the publisher's name. There's a publisher's name for it. I mean, you can find it just by looking cloth, paper, scissors, but it's um, Interweave, Interweave Press. And Interweave Press also has online classes. Um, you can subscribe to them, you can pay per class, and they're really reasonable and they always have sales. So if you get on Interweave Press, uh, email list. They will send you updates on all their classes, their videos, their magazines, and all that. So if you want to take online classes, that is a good place to find some. And it's not the only place that I'm just mentioning those because of it. Uh, they have their magazine. So cloth, paper, scissors, like it says, it, it does other things besides just paper. It does fabric art, lettering it does a little of everything so if you uh, like to do mixed media more with fabric this would probably be more conducive to you than either somerset studio or art journaling although everybody here that's in our group pretty much does all of it so we'll do you know a little of everything so if you're watching this and want to join and any of these things uh, uh, entice you then come on over <laughs> and be a part of, um, and a lot of the girls stream here, we all try to promote each other. Some of us have YouTubes, some do only YouTubes. So you'll find a great group of gals and a couple of guys, you know, a couple of great guys that uh, are, are part of it as well. And uh, you'll find lots of inspiration and it is free. So, you know, my show is free. Come on over and, and visit sometime. Come on over and send spell. Yes, I, I live in Atlanta. <laughs> okay, so 
the the newest book that I got was Art Journal Courage by Dina Wakeley, and I already did a review on this, and we did a project out of it. So a couple of uh, you streams ago, and a couple of YouTubes as well, we did we did a review of this book, and we did a project out of it. Her first book is Art Journal Freedom. How to Journal creati Creatively with Color and Composition. And this one is Fearless Mixed Media Techniques for Journaling Bravely. So if you want to see more of Dina Wakely's style in, in, her, uh, in this book, then I've got a, a, a separate video on that and a whole project on that as well. So I won't get too much into that one. Okay, so those are the... <clears throat> like the most updated magazine and publications uh, the rest that i'm going to show you they're going to be in no particular order okay and i'll try not to bump my camera as i jimmy my chair back and forth here because i already pulled the piles of books all right so i think what i'll do is i will start with kind of where i started which was more in book making and book decorating and altered books now, when I say started, I don't mean started as in arting. Uh, I've, art, I've done art all my life. I've done art for over 50 years, but uh, in, in journals, all right? Now, I've always kept sketchbooks, and I know a lot of people, you know, say, oh, well, there's a difference between a sketchbook, an art journal, an art book, an altered book. I think these days we all just kind of do all of it. It all kind of co-mingles and kind of overlaps and especially since there's been so many different books out different examples out we all just kind of um, it, it's it gets all mixed up so I think any of these books will apply to art journaling and collage or mixed media they'll all you know cross over um, you know I don't just do my mixed media and collage in journals like the one I just showed you but I do like art cards I do small little collage art mixed media cards. So, you know, it, it, it's not limited to just a journal. So don't feel like, you know, you have to go out and buy books and journals. You can do, I have notebooks. I keep tons of ideas in three ring binders with uh, notebook paper. So there's just, a, and I did a show on the different ways to art journal, and I only covered about half of the ones I wanted to, but that's also in the recordings. Okay, so in no particular order, some of these are older than others. I will probably just try to tell you maybe the date, the author, and a quick flip, because like I said, I picked about 40 books. Sip of coffee. If y'all have any questions, please put them in caps because I'm not reading the chat. <laughs> you heard me speaking Southern there, Dana? Okay. <laughs> uh, don't make me go get myself a Moon Pine RC Cola now. <laughs> Pull my Paula Dean. <laughs> don't email me people I'm just having fun all right so this one's called the decorated page journals scrapbooks and albums made simply beautiful by Gwen Dine d-i-e-h-n and if I mispronounce the names just you know you know yeah all right so um this one's published by Lark Book this is a hardback first edition from 2002. Now, because these are some of these are older, I know for a fact this one comes in paper because I've seen it. But um, some may or may not. So just write down, get you a piece of paper, pencil, write down some of the titles of these books and check on Amazon. I'm sure that by the end of this show, you'll have a bulk order and get free shipping. <laughs> yeah, Miss Mary, we need, where is Miss Mary D been? We need Miss Mary D and Anita K. <laughs> I'm talking to the girls in chat. All right, so the decorated page talks about different, and, and all of these basically will go from the basics, tools and art supplies, the different paints, whether you're using a sketchbook, whether you're using uh, blank books, altered books, you can use any of them. And it, some are more technique driven and and uh, demo than others. Some are just more eye candy. And I'll try to kind of tell you, you know, which ones are, are more which. But this is an older one. This is like, you know, 10, 12 years ago. So you can see how long art journaling and... Uh, 
taking your sketchbooks to the next level, if you want to call it that. But there's an example there. There's some examples here. And each one usually is good about doing a um, materials list. Okay, this one's called Cover to Cover, Creating Creative Techniques for Making Beautiful Books, Journals, and More. This one is more on how to make your own. Uh, Shireen Laplante. And it's $19.95. Now, like I said, just because it's older doesn't mean that it's not useful. You know, the techniques of making books and things like that are eternal. You know what I mean? And uh, different ones, newer ones have come out. And uh, so I'm just giving you all some ideas and some different options to think about. This one shows all the different types of the parts of a book, the types of things to make. Very uh, detail oriented in how to sew and stitch different types of books. Very uh, demo oriented as far as drawings of how to do the different ones, box books, star books, um, flip books, um, you know, eternal books that go one way and then flip them around, they go the other way, the different kind of stitches, all how to stitch. So if you are interested in making your own books, sewing them up yourself, drilling, uh, the holes and make it just I mean it's got every kind just tons and tons of types of books to make and also anytime there's an article by the artist the author or has to do with the book I always keep those articles in the book any obituaries or anything like that I keep them in in my books okay any questions or anything all right no questions all right Next is Making and Keeping Creative Journals. Suzanne Tortilla. Tortilio. I'm not, I don't know. Don't, you know. Where's, uh, where's our um, Trudy? <laughs> Trudy. <laughs> okay, so this one is Lark Book. This one is the paperback edition, which was 2002. The hardback was 2001. So like I said, you know, just check around. Some of these might be really cheap, like the the how to make a zine book. When we talked about that a few months ago, it was down to like 99 cents and everybody went and bought them out. <laughs> so you might be able to get some of these really cheap. So it's another one of making and keeping. So it shows the art of journal writing, how to do they and sometimes they call art journals visual journals so that some that's to me an interchangeable term visual journal art journal uh, how to how to uh, sew your own books how to do a dream journal a poet's journal how to do a grandmother's journal a sculpture journal a painter's journal a gardener's journal, a bird lover's journal, quilter's journal, a reunion journal, relocation journal, child's summer journal, hollow back spine journal, a girdle book, and that's the type of stitching and binding it is. So this really helps you specify the kind of journal you might want to keep. Uh, flip back through the decorated page for Darcy, I sure will. The decorated page, journals, scrapbooks, and albums made simply beautiful. Okay, so let me get it going this way. Do I need to zoom in one? Let me zoom in one click and refocus. I think maybe that will help. Let me get something for to focus on here, guys. Come on. Oops. Okay. All right, maybe that will help. 
do a little bit of uh, a little closer. Okay. All right. So this has the basics. Did I lose the focus, guys? Are we? Hmm, hang on one second again. I think it got a little bright with the white pages. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> the supplies, the different kinds of paints, pencils, stencils. You know, now everybody's stenciling and jelly plating in their books as well. Illuminate, it gives a little history of illumination, calligraphy, um, illuminated manuscripts, just a little bit, just to kind of tease you. If you ever want to see a stack of calligraphy and illuminated uh, lettering, I have um, I have those books as well. So if you want to see any of those, today I'm trying to concentrate on journals, book books, and collage, and we got plenty of those to go through. Customizing a blank book, uh, laminating a page, edge trimming, altered books. So this is where you take a, a actual book and alter it which I did pull a couple of those as well to show y'all. Lettering, emblem books, emblem books like, um, there's a whole history on emblem books. Um, for instance, the like all the trees. Somebody would do a whole book on like different trees and um, for an, right, an early example of an attempt to combine text and image in an equal relationship is a 16th and 17th century emblem book. Emblems were combinations of a picture, either a woodcut or an engraving, and a motto, which served as a title and a short verse or prose passage. By reading the verse and viewing the image, the reader was able to interpret a moral meaning or lesson. Emblem books, which were collected, which were collections of emblems, were a popular means of education throughout Europe at that time. So, and, and you can Google any of this information, guys. We want more, you know, specific information. But, you know, when you want to make a book, alter a book, journal a book, drawing closer, nature journaling, uh, then these kind of books will really inspire you. Even if you don't necessarily do a step out or a demo yourself, you're going to get tons of information. Here's a whole section on columns, grids, diagonals, shapes, different shapes to use, cutouts and add-ons, writing small, like nature journals, different applications, information gathering, storytelling, patterns and motifs, uh, and then all kinds of samples. So yeah, so that's the decorated page. Again, for Darcy, who requested seeing a little close-up view of that. The next one here is called Making Journals by Hand, 20 Creative Projects for Keeping Your Thoughts by Jason Thompson. It is a uh, quarry publication. This one is published in 2000. Uh, Rockport Publishers, which is, I guess, a division of quarry. Okay, so let me just kind of flip through now. I, don't, I do not remember. I got something stuck in here for whatever reason from a project, I guess. They usually start with the materials list, choosing your paper, blank books, historical journals. So they give you examples of them. I hope you all can see okay. Proceed to check out. Hi, <laughs> Dana. <laughs> I know, guys. I can't help it. I love books. I love sharing them and put them in your cart, you know, and look at them and think about it and narrow it down. Don't buy yet because I have about 35 more books to go. <laughs> All right. So here's journal projects, making your own journal, creating a spiral bound. And, you know, back when this happened, you know, to make a, a spiral bound book, you probably had to go to like kinkos or you know now they have even machines you can spiral bound yourself or like you know a, a you know much cheaper tool than it probably was in 2000 even if you could get it you know we didn't even have you know and half of the stuff now that we have with the you know computers and tools and stuff daily journals uh, all step-by-steps, garden journals, step-by-step. And you see they have all kinds of little examples here. 
uh, triptychs and books with nonlinear pages. You know, we all do a lot of uh, tip-ins and fold-outs and things like that these days. Uh, nature journal, step-by-step. -step. Journal techniques, wax resist, blender pens, image transfers, uh, sewing and non-adhesive inclusions. Um, and they give a lot of step-by-steps in this one. Paper cutting, more than handwriting, plaster paper, which now, I don't know, you know, what they use for the plaster. Now we use, uh, you know, molding paste. Some call it modeling paste, whichever, you know, like caulking, you know, chalk, you know, stuff like that. Carved stamps, carving your own stamps. Uh, here's, they've uh, carved their stamps in corks wine corks on the sides and on the tops so you can see you can make uh, like rolling stamps out of corks journals as art thinking outside the box here they made a journal out of a lunch box you know sesame street lunch box and then lots of samples usually are at the back of these books with, with lots of resources. Now, granted, this is from 2000. This is 14 years ago. The resources are, might not be, you know, but, you know, you, 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 you pick up all these things for different uh, ways. Altered art techniques for creating altered books, boxes, cards, and more. Here's one where they have used a game board. Now, we've done that before on stream where you take an old game board, and you can cut it down either in half or in quarters and make your book covers. Now, I'm not sure if that's what they're doing here or if they just altered a game board for an art piece. But you can use old game boards that you get at thrift stores and yard sales and stuff like that and cut them up. They make great book covers because they're so hard. You know, they're a good, good uh, mat board to use for um yeah, Eileen probably already has all these. Just saying. So if y'all need more information, just, you know, tap Eileen on the shoulder there and she'll, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I bumped the camera. All right, so this one is Terry Taylor. And this is a hardback as well, which I'm sure comes now in paperback. If it, you know, you have to look around, see which ones of these are still around. This one is from 2004. Lark book as well. I like Lark books for these kind of things, but my favorite, I guess, I don't know, Corey and um, what's the other one? Um, I love books. It, you can't go wrong. Let me tell you. A little uh, sidebar here is uh, any book by Chronicle. I'm just pulling this one out to is, is to show you what their this is their logo Chronicle Books Chronicle Books you cannot go wrong with a Chronicle book I'm just saying Chronicle Books rock all right now uh, back to this one so let's just maybe I should just kind of hit the uh, contents altered art basics altered books boxes and tins cards tags and games and altered objects so this is the kind of thing that our Artie Dar makes she will make the coolest three-dimensional items ever so it has the basics and look this one even has a clotting helmet example in it which I did pull two of her books that I have in the stack here somewhere when we get to the collage books so uh yeah uh, her a couple of her books oh here's some different game boards game pieces these are all there's some stamps different um, things that you can use this is especially true if you do dimensional you know different uh, uh in boxes and um, let me pull one example here now, I don't really do a lot of dimensional work. I gotta be careful not to trip over these books. I, I can be a clot. Y'all know. Y'all see me fall on stream. Um, hold on, let's see here. Let me pull. Here's a couple of my uh, altered cigar boxes I've done a few years ago. Just to give you an example of the kinds of things. Now, these are kind of pretty simple, but they're just some boxes. And then I've hand-drawn the art. 
and then put the art in the back. And what I did in these boxes is I took some of my empty inks and I drew them. This is the original. It's not a, that's not the copy. I put the original in here. I did these in 2008. And uh, then I used the actual items. Here's the black ink, which is the bigger cartridge. And, and so I just used my own art, and then I also used the items to make it a dimensional piece. Here's one where I did the same thing with some little, uh, little making memories paint things. And I uh, put the lids on top, just played on the box all around, and then used the dried paint, uh, glued them in. So there's just a couple examples of uh, dimensional type art that you can, uh, I got a few of those. And I, I've done a few, but it's not my thing. It's not something I love to do. I did one with scotch tape, a pair of scissors, and just different items like that, which speaking of your everyday items, I did pull a couple Danny Gregory books just as a sidebar too. All right, so I just thought maybe Okay, Dana, I'm recording, I think. Yeah, I am. So using souvenirs, dress patterns. This is a good one for material ideas. You know, altered, you know, book pages, ticket stubs, gluing a couple pages, making uh, holes in your books to put art in. Um, a lot of different, a lot of dimensional type things. Although that's not all, but, you know, there is... A, a dimensional element to these this this book altered uh, altered art here's a cigar box uh, looks like some coasters using uh, the outside of a book to make a you know open it up and make a book there's a the peppermint bark tin and a little altered piece and this reminds me of um, Oh, hang on, Wait, get it off oh, the shelf here. Oh. Reminds me of Joseph Cornell. This is his uh, biography, Joseph Cornell Theater of the Mind, and he did like probably the first one that really used cigar boxes and altered. You know, I'm not saying nobody ever did it, but he was the first one that got it famous. Let's put it that way. So, and, and all the pictures are in black and white. So you can kind of see here's one of his boxes here. And if you look them up, you can see probably color examples and stuff. But this is his whole biography, which is like really interesting. If you like reading about artists' lives. <laughs> so anyway, but that's what this kind of thing reminds me of here. All right. Different kind of little art boxes. Okay, let me put a test in my chat to make sure my chat keeps scrolling. Here's some game boards and game pieces. Uh, different cards, uh, you know, using a, uh, playing cards and all different kinds of things like that. You can use greeting cards. Uh, and then, of course, they talk about tags. You know, this was tags were really had a big, like, wave of popularity and trend. And uh, people still like to make tags and exchange tags and, like, you know, uh, it was after our ATCs, Artist Trading Cards, and uh, but you know you can kind of do the same type of thing on them. So anyway, that is Altered Art Techniques for Creating Altered Books, Boxes, Cards, and More. All right, then we have Altered Book Workshop. 18 Creative Te Techniques for Self-Expression. Bev Brazelton. I believe she, do I have a couple? I don't know, I have a, I think she did a few. This is a North Light book. North Light is uh, one that's done, you know, lots of art instruction type books. Uh. <laughs> You're waiting, watching, and making a want list, Eileen? Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, you know, I, I'm hoping that y'all are kind of like taking notes and writing down some, if not, you know, the, the every book here, maybe some ideas that you might glean from even the daily contents of something. 
So 18 creative techniques for self-expression. And uh, this one is a soft back and it came out, I got this 2004. So again, it's 10 years old. So, you know, it's, you know, you may think you've seen it all. Well, if you go back to some of these older ones, you might surprise yourself and think, oh, you know. So just the materials list, choosing a book, developing a theme, the general process or process of Darcy UK and Canadian other and UK and Canadian girls. <laughs> oh, I love saying that. Basic techniques. There's just different. Here's some collaging on the inside of a book. Okay. I do have a couple digi books on how to do digi collage and things like that, but I'm not going to cover those today. Um, I probably, I don't know that I'll get through all of these that I have stacked up here. Cutting doors into the books and windows to put your art in. Adding tags, folding pages, how to fold different, adding inserts. So a lot of this type of thing, other than the example shown, you will have a lot of repetition on like, let's say you buy, get a book on how to bind your own book. You'll have a lot of repetition, but all the examples are always new eye candy uh, and every book is different. Shadow boxes, variations, glazing, adding texture, stamping, uh, collage covers, variations, cutting the covers, creative techniques, words, designing with words, adding drawers, hanging embellishments, adding fibers and beads. So you can kind of see pop-ups. Uh, if there was something, maybe if it went a little fast, you could probably stop the video and at least get an idea. All right, I've got a couple more here. Altered book collage. All right, let me sip a coffee. Okay, Barb, everybody else is just making lists. They're on Amazon with their finger on the button. <laughs> so just settle in. All right, so this one is published by Sterling, and it's Barbara Mathiasen. And it is, this is a hardback. 2005 like I said you know check for the uh, softback versions now all right so the table and contents has what is collage what to do with your altered book building a page and general supplies general instructions 100 and ways to alter a book techniques for decorating book pages and then altered book cover page ideas a whole list of those so again I'm not going to have time to like do a full review of any of these but if there is one in particular or something that you're really really interested in and can't find it or want to know more about I'll do a more in-depth uh, review of it so what is collage what to do with your altered books building a page uh, all the supplies, general instructions, and like I said, some of this you'll, after you have a few of these books, you're thinking, oh, I already know how to stamp, I already know how to carve my own, I already know about this or that, but you know, every book has a little bit something different, you'll always learn, oh, here, look, Beat a Triangle Book, look how pretty that is, that's something that Mitzi would tackle, I'm not much on on beating patients but Mitzi I could so see her tackling that project I don't know if she's still here but yeah Mitzi I could so see that here's here's the inside Mitzi's our uh, beater our professional beater here <laughs> it seems like we all have our like our specialty that we not just do well but that we really love I mean for instance like Eileen or DigiArt uh, Mitzi, her beading, um, you know, I love collage, and uh, it's just, you know, every, you know, Barb does every kind, oh, I need to probably show Barb's book, too. Barb does, um, she has a, a book published on uh, her sculpting doll faces, so everybody, you know, has their loves, not that we don't cross over and do different things and learn from each other, but it's, you know, you find something you really love and you just work it and work it and work it because you love it. 
you know, I used to love to do calligraphy. I still enjoy calligraphy, but it's not like, um, it's not the passion that I had before because for one, I just don't need to do it that much because everybody prints out their own fonts and text. So it's like, I don't want to say it's, um, it's, it's just not a current, like a lot of people aren't doing a lot of calligraphy, but I'm hoping for a calligraphy revival. All right, games, using game pieces and uh, window collages, tags and envelopes, and the, just the different samples in each one, travel journals, a family book, a cookbook, a no cooking book. So just take a look at all the different ones. I'm kind of speeding through them. The Complete Guide to Altered Imagery. Now this is <coughs> mixed media techniques for collage, altered books, artist journals, and more. And it's a quarry, Karen Michael. And she's another one that's been around a long time doing altered mixed media kind of thing. And if I'm not mistaken, this one is where they she uses a lot of photography. So uh, if I'm, yeah, altering her, her own photography. So if you're, you know, this might be something you might want to look into, how to alter your photography, how to, you know, the different surfaces of pictures and how you can, the emulsions and things will do different things. So uh, here's the diff, oh, let me tell you the year. Let's see here. This one is 2005. Now I do realize that we all do inkjet printing and you know, all our digi printing and stuff like that. I don't think that she did any of that. She uses Polaroids, 35 millimeter. Um, well, she does say working with scanners and printers. So maybe she did cover that some. I haven't looked at this book for a while. Altered imagery from found sources, experimenting with magazine collage, found objects, image transfers, uh, altering using printmaking techniques, acetate, uh, using photographic images to create linoleum and rubber block prints, creating mono prints, and you know a lot of us you know got the jelly plate now and you know uh, experimenting with our own printing and stuff like that. All right, so she got to remember a lot of photography, her own photography and pictures, and altering them and adding color to them. And so if you are into photography, this is probably more uh, something. Here's some different ways, color variations, dim digital image altering, which, you know, we all can do that so simply now on any app. But, you know, at the time, that was probably a big, you know, thing to be able to color, alter the colors of your images so easily. Um more found objects. So I'm just kind of doing, I think I told y'all like the titles of all these already. Mono printing, fun ideas for developing your creative self. A lot of them will have little uh, self ex exploration type things, questions and answers to ask yourself so you can kind of figure out what you really are liking to do. Here's Claudine. I recognize her uh, work right there. That's a Claudine. I, I did pull two of Claudine's books. Uh, this is another, uh, what's her name? Um, Lynn Whipple. I recognize, and most people would. Uh, she does a lot of tan, black, and red color palette. So anyway, lots of cool examples. That's the Complete Guide to Altered Imagery, Karen Michael. <laughs> you're strong. No, it's not that you're strong, Eileen. You have them all. And some of the girls are also saying that they have some of these books. Darcy UK, you have that book? Yeah. Have you done many projects out of it? See, I like to hear what people have done with them. All right, this is Altered Books, Collaborative Journals, and Other Adventures in Bookmaking. Now, uh... It's not, I don't, I mean, I still see it around, but it's not as popular as it, I, to me. I, maybe I'm just not in the same circles that uh, where there's a lot of book swapping, but where you'll do some pages in a book and you send it on. It's like a round robin and you swap the books out with people and they mail it on. And usually what it is, is everybody starts with one book and then they, it goes to person to person to person and it rotates among, you know, really you want to have trusted friends to do that with. Because otherwise, books get lost. 
people just disappear. So you really, if you ever want to do a round robin book, you know, an actual book where you've done a lot of work in, you want to make sure it's someone that you trust. Now, I know things happen when people, you know, the mail loses things and all, but you really want to have trusted people. And it does get expensive, especially these days, shipping anything is expensive, let alone shipping books every month or two. So, but anyway, that being said, Barb, and I'm just saying Barb because we have a thing about that being said, <laughs> we just tease each other. Okay, so some books to play with, types of books, coffee table books, dictionaries, old atlases, address books, children's books, phone books, pulp fiction, romance novels, textbooks, vintage books, your favorite novel. Any of those are books that you can alter and play with, and they're very specific to something you might like. Uh, you know, like I talk about doing the magazine, altering your magazines, that you want to pick a book, a magazine, that's something like if you're a bird watcher, pick a bird magazine. If you like home decorating, pick that, you know, comic book, whatever you want to alter, you want it to be something you're going to have fun with, especially if you're going to do a whole book. <laughs> um, yeah, and so that's, that's true, uh, Julie. Uh, Topaz just said that swapping pages makes more sense than swapping a whole book. Then you can swap pages and you can bind them yourself. That's that's a good point. Thanks for bringing that up, Julie. Okay. So I'll just kind of do a little flip, laying out a page. Uh, this one has more specific projects. Some fun things to do with books. You know, different, uh, you know, how you can ink them, sew them, glue them, you know, all the different collage them. And then this one has more um, projects, not necessarily step outs. It does tell you a little bit of how they did the book, but it's not really something necessarily you're going to want to replicate. It's not a step by step. It more describes how they did the book so that you can get uh, examples of how to do it you know, in your, in, in your own way. You won't be able to duplicate any of these exactly is what I mean. Okay. So, and, I, and this reminds me of Tisha Moore. I did not pull, I have a couple of Tisha Moore's. Uh, her, and her zines are really like magazines. I mean, like larger. They're not like the zines like we were talking about in the last show, small zines. Her, hers are more magazines. This kind of style. Uh, this, this, although this is Karen Michael here. It just, it just brought it to my mind. I don't think I pulled my Tisha Moore magazines. Uh, but that's another one to look up. Uh, using different sewing, um, sewing ephemera. And then here's a whole gallery of different projects that people submitted for this book. All right, so that is that first stack. <laughs> Here's the first stack that I pulled off my shelf to show. All right, for, let me do a sidebar before I get a whole nother big stack. Let me do a couple of sidebars here. One is Danny Gregory's books, which if you are doing any kind of art journaling or even collage or any kind of mixed media, I just like to say mixed media because it's like a little bit of everything. But if you are interested in adding your own drawing, or making a sketchbook slash journal, you know, drawing your own images and practicing. This book right here is uh, the creative license, giving yourself permission to be the artist you truly are. Danny Gregory, the author of Everyday Matters. And, you know, if you all know Danny Gregory from the Everyday Matters challenges online, he challenges you to draw, not just every day, but your your items that are around you. And that's what he did. He did. And he drew he drew everything around him, his food, his clothes, his books, everything around the people, everything around him. He would draw and this gives you and he draws in pen. So uh, he he would draw, uh, you know, just everything. So if you want to get brave and just, you know, go for it, I like, this is a good one to recommend. You know, it's not going to show you how to lay out um, a face and the body and so many, you know, head heights and all that. 
this is just take it, picking up a pen and going for it. And this is another one of his books. Now, he has a travel one. I think it's called an illustrated travel or something. But this one's an illustrated life, and it's the drawing inspiration from private sketchbooks, artists, and illustrators, and designers. So this is a good example of a, like, working artist sketchbooks journals. Okay, we'll call it journals sketchbooks. I just wanted to throw these two in here. They're a little different than like the mixed media type thing, but it's also another thing that you can, where to show that you can incorporate it all, including your own drawings. Okay, so these are all different artists. Each artist has a couple of pages of work, and uh, so Something like this is great to see a variety of artists. And so you can just, I'm just going to do a quick flip here just so you can see how the variety of painting, drawing, sketching, mixed, you know, it's a little of everything. But this is more what I would call sketch, you know, our traditional sketchbooks. Okay, so anyway, that's just another little, uh, you know, sidebar there if you want to draw more than do mixed media or collage. All right, so let's move that over here. All right, uh, let's see, I'll put that one there. I'm trying to move the stacks to the back of the room as I go so I can put them back on my shelf in the same order that I have them organized. All right, still with me? <laughs> Hey, Sharon. Yeah, we're doing a about a 40 book uh, review, not even a review, a book show. I had a request on my um, YouTube. Uh, someone wanted to see all, uh, art journal and collage books. So I pulled those and a few others that kind of tie in. All right. So some of y'all and a lot of y'all, every one of y'all probably know Claudine Helmet. These are two of her books. She also has a little um, scrapbook kit thing. Uh, that I also have, but I didn't pull that. I just wanted to pull the, these types of books. Um, I have painting books, drawing books, and calligraphy, and other types of books as well, that if you want to see any of those other books, just leave me a message, and um, we'll do more book, book shows. So in the meantime, Sharon, everybody's at Amazon filling up their carts. <laughs> well, a lot of the girls already have a lot of these books already. So, Collage Discovery Workshop, this one, let's see, came out in 2003, and then her Collage Discovery Workshop, Beyond the Unexpected, came out in 2005. So, and they both do different things, but Claudine's real good, and she has, uh, and for many years, I don't know if she still does workshops around the country, but she uh, did a lot of workshops around the country <clears throat> teaching, and she's very good at step-by-step -step instructions. So if you want to learn any of these techniques, Claudine's real good about the step-by-step -step projects. Creating backgrounds, making image transfers, having fun with beeswax, antiquing found objects, experimenting in collage, creating miniature assemblages, playing with composition, and storytelling with collage. Those are the main chapters with uh, four sub, you know, sub projects in each one. So um, she goes through the tools and supplies, finding materials for collage. This is good if you've never done any collage at all she's real good about walking you through a little of everything she's you know she's just real um very she's a teacher she's very teacher oriented okay peeling paint she does this peeling paint technique with um you put Vaseline on and then you put the paint on and I don't remember exactly step by step but then you wipe it away and it gives you a technique like that. It's really cool. So uh, I've, it's been a while since I've done a lot of these projects. So uh, scraping paint using one of these, uh, you know, uh, paint texture things that you, we used to use when we did uh, uh, murals and uh, faux finishes, that kind of thing. Uh, peeling paper, heat transfers, 
He transfers on wood, contact paper, uh, beeswax, wax collage, wax stamping. So this is very, if you want specific techniques with, you know, antiquing with acrylic paint, rusting metal, verdigris, instant rust, all this uh, is very good. Then she has different projects like with tins in the in little tin boxes and things so and boxes as well so this one and and this one which is new techniques using color personal imagery and creative surfaces so the same thing she's got tons of finding your personal style other kinds of materials so you can just kind of see here her style <laughs> One of the girls, Sharon, just said she's she's making a mantra going, I must not add to Amazon. <laughs> well, you don't have to buy them all at once, but you can make a list. Creating textured backgrounds, uh, doing crackles and layered masking tape, tissue paper, textured backgrounds. Uh, and she does such fun little projects like this, you know. She has her de she has a de very definitive style for sure. If you've seen any of her work, you know exactly what kind of work who she is. So all different kinds of printing with color, layering multiple prints, um, color staining, some fabric, uh, canvas wall hanging, and she does the step by step. See, she goes step by step on how to do each thing. Adding hand-drawn elements, photo collage, family portraits. So anyway, take a look at that. So there's two uh, collage. Uh, these are especially good if you want to do different different types of techniques all in one book that she covers. And also, if you've not done a lot of collage and you don't know what mediums to use with what and what glues and transfer techniques and all that, Claudine really goes in depth. Okay, so this one's called Kaleidoscope. Now, I also have to say, I have, I've had a few other books um, on collage that I've given away, and I don't even remember the names of them now. So there are tons more out there, uh, but sometimes when I just have got you know, I, I know I'm not going to use the book again, and I do giveaways and, and uh, give away some of my books and stuff. So I don't have all, every collage book I've ever owned and uh, or a, any uh, type of book that I've ever owned. But I just wanted y'all to know, uh, here's a few of the basics. All right. So this one's called Kaleidoscope, Ideas and Projects to Spark Your Creativity. And it's Suzanne Simianiet. Uh, let me just show you there. There's her name. And she also has another one out now uh, on metal. On using metal. And I don't have it, and I, it's been a while since I've seen it, so I can't even tell you the name. But if you put her in, uh, uh, you know, either Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Google, whatever, you can find them. All right, so this one is, uh, let me see if she has a more a, a description. <clears throat> All right, I thought she had a more, uh, indulge your creative cravings. I know there's eye candy in this one. That's why I bought it, but uh, I can't remember how technique oriented this one was or not. So, conceiving the art. Now, I've got to also be careful. Some of these examples might have some naked ladies or something. I've got to be careful, uh, you know. Uh, stream does not like us <laughs> showing any nudity, even statues or anything. So we have to be kind of careful with that. Uh, mark making, the joy of drawing. Uh, a lot. Of, this is more. Uh, I. I mean, it has a few uh, step out things. Not really step outs, but uh, how to do them, what materials. But it's more of an idea generator. Uh, it has the supplies and things you need for each project, but she doesn't do step by steps. Found symbols, uh, a lot of ideas, a lot of um, dream creative spaces, a lot of creativity, little checklists, inspiration and ideas, 
um, that will, this is more a spark your creativity type of book than it is a step out book. <laughs> you girls. Um, stream writing, putting creative ideas into action, mail art, more inspiration. Lots of, you know, lots of lists and methods and materials, but it's not one that shows you like Claudine does, you know, how to do each step by step. But it's full of eye candy and full of, uh, you can see full of different ideas and inspiration all right so that's kaleidoscope these two let me do the collage playground a fresh approach to creating mixed media art kimberly santiago and i did like this one and i've said this before the only thing i did not like about this one was how they put all the step outs in a little digi frame they're all in little frames for some reason, for me, I found that a little irritating. I don't know why, but it's just me. You know, I mean, it doesn't take away from the projects, but just having all the step outs and little frames was kind of, I don't know. I just found it a little odd, but the, there's lots of projects. Let me tell you a little of the table. Okay. Um, 2010 and um, getting ready to play your collage toy box your adhesives and all the different materials, collage elements, sheets, altered book pages, different uh, things to use in collage elements, hide and seek, different ways to, well, just different ways to use and put your things, put your, um, play, on your play clothes, being uh, free and creative, adding and subtracting a little thing on composition. And so she does do a lot of step-by-step, -step, as you can see. Um, but it's all in little frames. I don't know. Kind of odd to me, but it, it's a lot of, uh, very, it's, it's got a lot of good, um, just basic paper cutouts, collage, this type of thing. So just to give you a few examples. Yeah, I think so, Eileen, just so you can kind of get an idea here some of the style that she does but it's it's there's step by steps so if you want to learn how to do you know a composition from step to step here you can kind of she does that oh the other collage book and just saw that bird reminded me um, i got some more i got more collage books over there i just don't know if i'll get to them today all right um collage journeys jane davies and a lot of y'all probably know jane davies also does um, uh, I don't know if, I don't want to say YouTube. She does cl online classes. That's the word I'm looking for. She does on online classes. I've not taken one, but I'm, you know, I know her name from just being around the, the product and stuff. <clears throat> and this one came out in 2008 and, uh, the contents gathering materials. And then of course there's like 10 things under each chapter. Uh, you know, uh, working in layers, painting with paper, using text, meaning and personal expression, journals and journeys. So uh, if y'all know Jane Davies or any of her kind of uh, style, I don't know that every collage here is hers yet. Um, I think she has other people's stuff in here, but I'm not sure. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, collage artist toolbox so like I said you know it's a lot of it can be inspiration and eye candy and anytime you're reading how an artist does their work you're going to learn something you will just automatically learn something painting with paper she, here she goes through different color palettes and uh a lot of collage basics and colors, working in layers. So, just to give you an idea here, using text in collage, 
lots of ideas, you know, lots of ideas. All right. She does YouTubes as well. Okay. Thanks, Dana. Yeah, and Pam Carricker is another one that I have one. I don't know that I pulled her book, but I do. Oh, I think I gave her book away. I don't know. Um, but she's another one, too, that incorporate. All this can cross over. Sorry, I bumped the camera, guys. I'm put something there. Uh, it, you know, if you're doing an art journal, a mixed media journal, a book, or just plain pages, all this stuff works together. All right. Um, Let me do a sidebar here to show you some samples of um, Sabrina Ward Harrison's work. Sorry, let me get the camera to stop swinging. And um, I've pulled four. I think there's another. I think I have, I don't know. I either have the fifth one or I don't have the fifth one. Anyway, so these, I believe this was her first one called Spilling Open, then Messy Thrilling Life then the true and the questions and this one is a journal that you're supposed to use although you know i can't imagine me using this journal it, it's just it's you know i wouldn't want it. it's her book and i just love her book and the story is happening and this one is another one that has lots of places that you're supposed to use her pages and it even comes with a little packet of collage in a glassine envelope so all kinds of little collage pieces of hers that come in a little glassine. And these books, this one's about, I think about a nine by nine format. And uh, this, let me tell you them in, in order. And I think there's a fifth one and I don't, uh, don't either have it here or I don't have it, I don't remember. So I believe this was her first one called Spilling Open. And it's a very, it's slick. It's, it's a great um, quality. And it's just, you just want to hug it. It's just so gorgeous. Okay, so these are books that Eileen doesn't have. So she's opening up her Amazon tab. <laughs> All right, so this one was her first book, I believe, and it came out in 1999. I, I think she has some kind of workshops. She lives in California now, I believe. And uh, I think she does personal workshops, but she I don't really see her as an online presence that much. Now, that may have changed since the last maybe six months ago that I looked. So um, don't email me. But uh, so this one is The Art of Becoming Yourself. And this was when she, this is kind of like a little bi mini biography. And she talks about, you can see how she, the, the idea of spilling, you know, just, Quickly writing down your stuff, throwing it down, writing it down, all that. I mean, she was the first person that I ever really saw actually implement that, okay? And so you can kind of see her writing style. It's kind of like a compilation of collage. And, of course, it's, you know, slickly, slickly photographed. And uh, her pictures of herself and her life and her fears and her dreams and her hopes and all that and it's just very it's just lovely to look at and read of course this is a kind of you know i love the i love text and i love fonts and so any of this writing messy writing is just kind of cool to me and i'm sure it is to all of y'all too so um i believe her books have only come out in paperback. I don't think they were ever in hardback. It's Sabrina Ward Harrison. Here's her name on this one. You can see it better. Okay. This was, I believe, the second one. Messy, Thrilling Life. The Art of Figuring Out How to Live. Now, like I said, there's a, there's a, I think there's a fifth one in here. I know this is her newest one, as far as I know. That's her newest one. So I'm trying to kind of, I think I'm going in order. Okay, this one came out in... What year did this come? 2004 is when she wrote this intro. Okay. And again, it's slick paper. Lots of her work and her, like here's her journals. So how can you be afraid to work if you see? <laughs> oh, lots of uh, her photography. She incorporates photography in her actual pages. 
and uh, I'm just not familiar with her online presence or if she sells things or what, you know. So she probably does. And like I said, I think she has workshops in California somewhere. Uh, so anyway, it's kind of another more of her biography. All right. Then the next one is called The Truth and the Questions. And this one is one that she is um, brave on the rocks. That's the other one brave on the rocks and i don't know if i have it or if it's uh i don't have it but that's the other book okay brave on the rocks so y'all could write that down if you want to know every well you can always look it up and find every book oh uh, so uh yeah okay eileen does she have five books i'm thinking she has five okay so this one is not slick pages it's matte it's matte pages. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's non-slick, non-shiny. But she made this for people to play in. To play in the journal and to write in. And she's like, has lines. And then she has like little questions. Like, on my wall, I would write. And you're supposed to fill this in. I just, I can't write on this. If I, I just can't, you know, it's just not me to write in these books. I love them and I collect them and I keep them in some brave dreams. And she has your little list there where you can write in it. There's only four there. Okay, well, I know there's five because of the uh, Brave on the Rocks. Spilling Open, Messing Thrilling Life, The Truth and the Question, Brave on the Rocks, and then this is the new one, The Story is Happening. So anyway, uh, it's got map pages with questions for you to kind of ponder and, you know, write things about. And I know that, did I pull it? Um, who's the other one that comes in similar? This one. Art Doodle Love. And I have a, her um, thousand journal pages. To show in a minute too this is a sidebar here these books are a sidebar but this is Don DeVry Sokol a journal of self-discovery it kind of reminds me of it it's got pages with questions for you to answer write in journal and it's already got stuff in it so that if you wanted to you're afraid of the white blank page and you want a journal you know these kind of books help you get past the white page all right, so that's kind of what this one is, you know, questions, and uh, then her new, the newest one that I know of is the story is happening, the one with the package of all kinds of cool collagey stuff, just all kinds of little pictures, drawings, little things like this, which uh, you know. Back in uh, the day of uh, Nick Bantock, when he had these little uh, envelopes with stuff in them, had to cost a fortune back when he did his books. Not that it's cheap now, but... All right, so this one came out. So you can see... And this is a Chronicle book. I don't know if all our books are Chronicle books. Chronicle... I don't know what this one is. Maybe just the last two are Chronicle. Yeah. But I love any Chronicle books. All right, so this came out in 2012. Yeah, the Griffin, that's that's what I'm talking about, Sandy. The Griffin and Sabine, which I'll show you those in a second as well. If you like collage, mixed media. And by the way, I believe I saw Nick Bantock tweet that he is working on the next book. But it won't be out for like two years. I don't remember. Don't quote me on that. Just look it up or follow him on Twitter or Facebook. And uh, he, he kind of updates himself. There. He doesn't, he's not a big tweeter and stuff like that. But I mean, you can find out, you know, information about his books. I'll show those in a second. I didn't pull them because they're not really how-to books. These aren't really either. But I wanted to show examples of people that have taken mixed media collage, journaling, sketchbooks, and what they've done with that. And this is this is some of the stuff. All right, so this is 2012. And again, this is a matte finish. It's not the shiny slick of the first two books. And uh, I just love her style, her freedom, her 
grave, you know. You can see she photographed some shoes and then just what she did is then took the took the photograph and did things and then re-photographed that. So you can make your own pages with your own stuff and then re-photograph it, print it out, and use it as your own journal pages. Does that make sense? Taking your own photographs, reprinting them, and then drawing on top of them. So you can see how fun and colorful and it's just, you just want to sit and stare. You know, you can just sit and stare at one page and go pick up your pen or paints or watercolors or whatever. And it'll just stir your imagination. Look at this old jewelry box. Yeah, a lot of the girls want to see Nick Bantock books. All right, I'll pull those in a minute. So you can see... All right, so those are Sabrina Ward Harrison. Oh. Let me put those there. Um, I think I have all but one of Nick Bantock's book, including his biography, which is a coffee table size book. But uh, I have all the Griffin and Sabine and a couple of uh, his other publications here, including this one, which is Urgent Second C Class, Creating Curious Collage, Dubious Documents, and Other Art from Ephemera. So he shows how he has taken vintage ephemera, tags, maps, vintage imagery, and made his own collages. And if you're not familiar with Griffin and Sabine and the whole series, this is how he does, this is another one here, this is how he does his storytelling, is with his collages, all right? Now, but I think this is the first one, and it came out in 1991. Now, I, I think, I think they're out in paperback, but I love these so much, I would wait with bated breath for them to come out and buy it immediately. So as soon as the, the Griffin and Sabine series would come out, so if they are in paper or softback, I don't know about it because I have them all in hardback. I don't think I have them in order here, but I'll just show you uh, what makes his stuff so amazing. Uh, not only does he tell a story that's like otherworldly, but he has the correspondence in little, um, well, here's the pictures of it, but he inserts little envelopes. Let me make sure we don't have any. He inserts the letters in the book. So this was not cheap back in 1991. I don't think it's, like I said, it's not cheap to do that kind of thing now. But he would, you know, have the different envelopes with the different correspondence in it. All right. And so there's a whole series of them. And I think, like I said, the last one in the series, the, I think he's going to finish it up. I think 2015. I don't remember, guys. It's a year or two. Okay, Sabine's Notebook in which the extraordinary correspondence of Griffin and Sabine continues. Again, you know, it's the, the postcardy look with the correspondence. And then every now and then there's the correspondence. Okay. I know. You can just look at him over and over, right, Jan? Well, be on the lookout or look for his tweets or Facebook or just look him up, Google him, and you'll, you know, find out um, when the last, I think he said it was the last one, the golden mean in which the extraordinary it continues. It's, oh, um, no, no, it says concludes, but I think he's, I think, uh, I don't think it concluded. I got these out of order, but anyway, um, I think it goes this way. Uh, because I think he said that it has to do with Griffin and Sabine in that last, in the next book. All right, so don't quote me, just look it up. Alexandria, in which the extraordinary correspondence of Griffin and Sabine unfolds. And again, it's, you know, they're not thick books. I mean, there's like, they're not even really numbered. Um, 
let me kind of give you an idea how many pages there are. Two, four, six, ten, twelve, and fifteen. Maybe thirty pages or so. But he tells these extraordinary stories with the postcards and the letters and then and the uh, correspondence inside each one. You know? All right, so there's that one. And then the Griffin, in which extraordinary correspondence of Griffin and Sabine is rediscovered. And I have to say, guys, it's been a while since I read these. I mean, you know, I got them in the 90s. Let's see what year this one is. This one's 2001. And then the Golden Mean was... Nineteen ninety three. Okay, so I did have them out of order. All right, so there's ninety one, ninety one, ninety two, ninety three, two thousand one. So there we go. Okay, and then this one is like how he does his collages. He shows how he uh, some of his process and stuff. But I love his, I mean, the biography, his big biography is up on my shelf over there. I, if y'all want to uh, read his whole life story, how he started in book illustration. And uh, I, I could show that another day too. I think I've shown it a full review, not a review, but a full like, you know, talked about it more. And the Forgetting Room. I think I have all his books, but one, the Venetian, I forget. It's a bunch of drawers. It looks like uh, like printer drawers and all kinds of items in it. So anyway, this is another story. And it's um, when the grandfather died. Well, I won't read it to you because uh, we'll, we'll be here too. I'll, I won't stop. I won't stop. <laughs> all right. So there's some of my. Uh, now I'm going to show you one of his other books here. That's a like an idea book. So hang on. Let me put this in. The other book that I have by him, which I believe is his newest one, is The Trickster's Hat. And we've done a couple projects out of this. And it's A Mischievous Apprenticeship in Creativity. And uh, he has little projects for you to do. And we've done a couple of them. Now, they're not on YouTube because these were uh, before I started uh, uploading to YouTube. They're not there. And I'm sure they're gone off of Ustream by now. But this one came out in, like, last year, didn't it? 2014. So it came out the beginning of this year. Uh, but we did a few projects out of it. And there's, uh, how many projects? Let me just look here. Uh, there are 49, I believe, 49 exercises. And... The thing about some of these, I tried to do a couple of them online in a three-hour time frame. The Venetian's Wife. Thank you. That's the other one. Thank you, Eileen. Uh, I, I, but some of them are very in-depth, and you have to really, some of them are large. Some of them take time, five, six hours. Uh, some you need to exchange with other people. So there's a lot of extra. This is a kind of book that you and a BFF would have like learned so much if you went through it together, I think. Now, mind you, I haven't done all 49 exercises, but we've done a couple and uh, on, on the show. And it, 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 it's very, um, cre it, it's a creative thinking book. It makes you think outside the box, uh, try new things, and he's big on collage. So that is his medium in his, you know, other than being the writer and, you know, in his books, it's uh, collage is his medium. So he wants you to do a lot of collage. So if you want to, but I, I got to tell you, I think it's for every level of person, but you, this is not a book if you're afraid to like cut or tear and glue and paint. You, this, you, you, you'll, you will, you'll be intimidated by it if you can't just like go for it. So just saying, if you do, um, like, let's see what he says here. And the Artful Dodger is the name of his biography. So he calls this right here, Artful Dodging the Roadblocks. 
Before you begin the exercises in earnest, ask yourself what you hope to get from participation. Obviously, you haven't read the rest of the book yet, but my guess is already you have a rough idea of what you hope to gain. What is that? What do you want to know? What part of yourself do you want to liberate? Now ask yourself what's going to stop you. How do you invariably block yourself from getting what you most need? We all find ways to undermine ourselves. And if you know those ways in which you obstruct yourself, maybe you can avoid the pattern and allow what follows to feed your most pressing needs. You'll Practical stuff. You'll notice that there are no computers involved in any of these tasks. That's not because, it's not, it's not as, I'm going to skip down because he's not saying that he's against computers or any of that. Um, with, e with each exercise, I'll tell you up front what materials you'll need. Sometimes it will be as simple as a pencil and a scrap of paper. Sometimes it will be more specific materials. Um, he's designed these to for the majority to be completed with the list of materials. He'll give you a time frame. Um, Although the majority of the exercises that follow involve art and writing, this book is for anyone who wants to widen their perspective and is prepared a ch to chance the trickster's crooked path. Finally, I encourage you to do the exercises in order, but it's not the end of the world if you hop around. And so, anyway, sorry guys, I computer went into sleep mode for a second. So uh, he gives you all kinds of... There's a stamp collage, and he just, they're only like two, three pages, most, the most four pages for each exercise. But you have to, a lot of them, you have to think, you stop. This one is a time frame of one day. So, you know, it's not really something you can really do a lot of on, on a stream, like to, you know, for us to work it out together. But anyway, the tricksters had a mischievous apprenticeship in creativity. So that's his new newest book. All right. So put that over here. I try to keep my books in some kind of an order so that when I'm asked to show them, I can find them again. All right. So I showed you this. You still here, guys? <laughs> Sorry, I bumped the camera again. I'm use, I am I got my husband's squeaky office chair because my other one just would not roll anymore. It just quit rolling altogether. So he's generously allowed me to borrow his chair until I get a new one. All right, so Art Doodle Love was the one I showed a second ago, and it's a journal of self-discovery. Again, like I showed you a little while ago, it is like already printed pages for you to get you started if you're afraid to um, think about different questions, or even if you don't use the questions, if you use it just to art journal in, the pages have color and stuff on them already, so you're not intimidated by the white page. You can glue stuff in, kind of smash book it, and that's another thing, you know, if you're, um, it, I think I showed some smash books on my last uh, different journals a couple of weeks ago, maybe. So also check out that. Um, video as well. Okay. Um, so this one is also compiled by Don DeVry Sokol. It's the Thousand Artist Journal Pages. Now this is a compilation of a thousand journal pages. And she put this out, and I think she sent out a call like a year before. Oh, I just cracked my back. Uh, popped it, rather. Um, she put out a, a call like a year before and collected people's journals and pu put them in this one publication. It came out, let me see if I can find the, where's the date? Here's the intro page. Did I not go far enough? Or is it in the back? Okay. Where is it? And it's a quarry book. Here it is. All right. 2008. All right. I got to sit on my foot and give my back a rest. Um, it came out in 2008. And what this is, it's not a how-to. It's 100% eye candy. What it is, is all, and she, I believe she puts them in alphabetical order. No, no, no she didn't. But it's um, sometimes two or three pages by one artist, adding up to a thousand all total of different artists. But there are um, a page or two, like for instance, um, this is all one artist, okay? And uh, 
so I may have like a couple pages. Some of them have only one example, well, back in front of a page or something. So it's just different. This is one person here, but that's a different person there. So, but it, what it is, is just a thousand different art journal pages by different artists compiled into one giant eye candy book. Um, oh, she did, okay. Did she do another one? Oh, she's done a second one now, is what Darcy said. Okay, she said there was a call, but she didn't have enough people in UK. Okay, I don't know anything about that, but apparently there's a second volume to this. So y'all be looking for that too. This is the first one. I don't have the second one, and I'm just flipping quickly here, just so y'all can kind of see. It's all a thousand different pages by I don't know how many artists. But they're all given credit on each page. So you can just see they're all numbered. We're in the 600s, 700s. <laughs> and I'm flipping three, four, five pages at a time here. So if you just want a lot of eye candy and see it and learn about a, a variety of artists, then this is a great mixed media artist journal, you know, just all different kinds of uh, media. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm going to move on. We're making progress. We are making progress. And the other day we were talking about doing that project out of Dina Wakeley's book. And I, I was talking about another book that I could not find. Well, it was on my bookshelf. I knew it was. I just couldn't find it on the, on the uh, spur of the moment last week. But the one I was talking about was Painted Pages by Sarah A. Hearn Bellamar. And this is the one where we took a children's, you know, it's, it's one of those golden, not the product golden paint people, but the golden books, children's books, and taken it and did a project out of this book. So here's one of the, and I just keep it in the book, but I couldn't find this last week. So I just wanted to show that, you know, another one of the projects that we had done using somebody's book. And I believe if I'm not mistaken, that Paula had journal artista said that she was going to uh, pick a book and do a project out of it too. But I don't. I think someone. I I heard that because I didn't. I don't think she recorded it anyway. Right, so there's that. All right. The next stack I have here, I have more art journaling and collage type books. All right. Here is, and I showed these a couple weeks ago. Orly. Avenieri, I know I'm probably not pronouncing that right. She has a blog and she does workshops as well out in California. She has a third book out now, which I don't have yet, but these are her first two. One artist journal, and this is like her biography, tells her history, and it's kind of like the same type of thing like Sabrina Ward Harrison, but in, you know, Orly has a different style. She's, uh, so that's the first book. And the second one is 14 Artist Journals. And this one, she's compiled 14, I think she said they're all her friends. If they're not, they, they are by now. And their journals. And photographed other artist journals that kind of have a similar style to that spilling type uh, style, if you will. Oh, thanks, Eileen. It was a fun one. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome, Jamie. You're so cute. So check out those two. And like I said, she has a new one out that just came out that I haven't bought yet. Um, you can order them off of Amazon. And, uh, all right, so I have about maybe about 10 more to go. And then we'll wrap this up. My throat's getting a little scratchy. And I probably need to go eat. My coffee cup is sticking to the table. And it's cold, but I gotta I gotta drink something. Alright, so here's a few more. This one is called True Vision, Authentic Art Journaling. It's a Quarry book and it's LK Ludwig. 
and this came out in 2008. And again, this is one of the first people that I really saw do, um, I, I believe she was a contributor in Somerset in the early days, in the 90s, and uh, that really did a lot of this type, this type of journaling, okay, back in the day. <laughs> like makes it sound like we're a thousand years old. Uh, let me see. Let me tell you the chapter titles. Okay, getting started. Relationships, the written word, current events, places and spaces, self-exploration, spirituality, and dreams. And so she does all this in her journals and... I'm not sure she has a compilation of other artists. I think she does, but I don't know for sure. It's been a while since I looked at this one, but she has little questions at the bottom. Like for instance, at the bottom of this, what are the last six things you added to your stash? Where are they? <laughs> can we all like think about that? What are the last six things you added to your stash and where are they? And then she gives you a couple little lines. Well, every, like every uh, page or two, maybe every page. Yeah, it looks like every page. She asks a little question like that. List five topics you could journal on right now. Make a list of all the media you use. Now list all the ways that you use that media. Pull out your list when you are stuck to help you brainstorm how to begin. So these kind of things, again, I would not write in the book, but they're good thoughts to, like, you could actually put in another journal. I would write those these questions in another journal and answer them rather than write them actually in the book. You know what I mean? Burn. <laughs> no, I'm still, I'm still here, Sandy. This is, this is the second video for the day. Well, I can think I'll probably wrap it up in about 30 more minutes. Keep this one under two hours. Uh, uh, the last thing that you added was chipboard shapes a week ago, and they're still in your desk waiting to be put away. Well, at least you know where they are, Darcy. At least you know. And, and by the way, anybody that's here, my chat is like, I have not refreshed my chat. I have no idea who's here. But if y'all uh, want to share your blogs, websites, or anything, feel free. Links are open. Eileen's probably sleeping on the job, but she's a mod. <laughs> Yeah, I do have some of those deck of card ideas, too. I have uh, one by, um, well, I have a couple different ones. I don't know if we'll get to that today. But the inspiration decks of cards, I've got some by Kyla, some by two, three other people. So maybe we'll do that another day. Okay. So she has little activities for you to do. And then questions on every page. List six words that you can immediately add to your vision deck. So she talks about making your own vision deck. Uh, list the layer. You know, she just has a question on every page. She's going through your childhood, the written word, incorporating text, quotes, um, personal storytelling, current events, everyday items, everyday um, you know, and then whose voice is the voice that is ongoing in your head? You know, things like that make you think. Uh, so just all different travel journals, house and home, favorite spaces, self-exploration. So you can see all the different types of journals, which are also included with different questions to answer to keep you authentic art journaling. And that to, this is more to me if you're big in writing. I'm not a big art journal writer. I, if I journal, it's a separate book, like I said in my Molies. Molaskina. <laughs> Sorry, I just love saying it. And um, so, you know, I don't really do journaling in my art. So if you want to call them, you know, visual books, journal, you know, we, we just, to me, they're all, they all just cross over. Okay. Collage, mixed media collage. This one's Holly Harrison, an exploration of contemporary artists, methods, and materials. Hi, Darcy. <laughs> I, it's just going to be me and Jamie and Dana, and they're going to be asleep. <laughs> I'm just kidding, people. I know. These go on long. That's why I record them. You don't have to watch it all in one sitting. Okay, so <laughs> 2007, a Cory book. This is a paperback version. 
Oh, the cover design was Don DeVry's Sokol. So that was, that's interesting. I just happened to see that. All right, so this one, the contents have engineering art. Okay, so these are different projects with different artists, like engineering art with uh, Lorinda Bedingfeld. Uh, and so each chapter is a different, and caustics with a different artist image word co connection with another so every chapter is a different artist doing a different project in their particular um i guess their medium their style so it's, like i said it's been a while since i looked at every one of these i'm trying to kind of kind of comes back to me as i'm flipping uh, okay so oh, i kind of remember now so they give a technique highlight not really a step by step but they give a technique highlight and then they do a little um they do a little in the studio with that person so like a behind the scenes a uh, little a little bio on each artist okay I'm, my back's gonna stretch here so this is more it gives you a technique highlight on how they did it, but it's not really, if you want to do a step-by-step, -step, this probably is not for you. Although, like, here's Tisha. She shows how she did her step-by-step, -step, but she's not really telling you, um, like, get this paint and that. You know, it's not that product and project oriented. It's more how they did it. And then there's a, in the studio, you know, tells a little background. So it's kind of like a little artist, individual artist example and a little bit of their history. There's Claudine was in there. So that's kind of uh, contemporary artist methods and materials. Okay. Then these two that I want to show, and then I got just a couple more. We still here? <laughs> All right, um, these Linda Woods and Karen D-I-N-I-N-O, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, and uh, they were, uh, I think they're sisters or sister-in-laws, I don't remember, it's been a while, uh, which one came first, I think this one came first, and this is a Northlight book, this one was 2007, Visual Chronicles was 2006, so this was the first one. Um, Visual Chronicles, The No Fear Guide to Creating Art Journals, Creative Manifestations, and Altered Books. And they are big on doing, they did little books and little uh, cards, and they kept it kind of simple. And see, so you can see the little books. And I, if I remember, they would try to do things like in coffee shops and on the go and when they traveled. So it's kind of like, um a kind of like a smash book but with no smashing more arting you know i mean there's a little bit of collaging and stuff like that but it's a lot of uh i think if i remember they're more quick projects uh smaller quicker projects small books cards tags uh, a little bit of ephemera and uh you know routine journal so you can kind of see it's like kind of like diary in a in a small in like on cards or small book. But it's kind of like more it reminds me more of diaries. You know, kind of kind of your everyday life. You go to the coffee shop, you pick up something, you write about it, that kind of thing. <laughs> That's the best way I could kind of describe it, Bar. <laughs> and then this one is um um, a little bit more techniques, uh, taping, tape transfer, stamping, uh, fonts. And these really are, if you have never art journaled, smash booked, ephemera collecting, anything, these are real basic and real, um, you can do this, okay? <laughs> Uh, a little bit more in depth, asking you know, asking yourself more questions to write about. Um, one day at a time, using a word. So just so that you kind of, I don't know, I haven't heard about them for a long time, but they, I think they were even on Oprah one time. 
This was from 2007. So I really haven't heard about them since, say, maybe since 2008. So, but you can, you know, again, look them up. All right, so there's a couple more examples. <laughs> Barb. All right, a few more I have here. And uh, I have five more, and these are art journaling collage, including, let me do a little, um, the collage workbook. This one is Randall Plowman. Now, Randall, I got his, did I keep his calendar in here? I think I did. I actually bought one of his calendars in 2013, which, of course, I'm not going to use it. I just have it for all the bird art, the beautiful bird art. Now, I think, you know, maybe Darcy bought this for me. I think I bought a print. I bought a print off his, he was, I don't know if he still does it, but he buys, I mean, uh, he would do a print a day and sell it for $25 every day. He would do one. Now, I don't know that he still does that uh, or not. And then I think Darcy bought me this for my birthday one, 2013, I believe. But it's the calendar, Darcy uh, Glam, and it has all his, like, that year's worth of bird. I know. And he, he has a new one. He has one this year. Uh, look him up on Twitter, Facebook, Dana. He's, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I saw that he has the 2015 calendar out. So look that up. But his book, and he does have a work, he does have workshops. A collage workbook, how to get started and stay inspired. 50 project prompts and an image library. Now, what he means by an image library is not a CD. He has his own uh, different images and things in the back here. Let me get to the back. That you can, uh, there, it's copyright free for you to use in all his projects. Now, we have done a couple projects out of his book. Again, those are no longer on Ustream, and it was before I uploaded to YouTube. But maybe this would be another good one to break out again and do some of the projects out of. So if you just want some projects to test yourself and try out, he's even given you some clip art in the back for you to use in the projects. Yes, you have the book, Barb. Barb says she likes this book. Okay, so he has, I think that's what I say, 49. So this was uh, 2012. And this, he has a very distinctive style as well. And his, if you go on his blog, just look up Randall Plowman. Let me show you his name so you can find him. Um, like I said, he was for a long time selling a painting a day, small ones, small paintings a day. I think they were four by four, five by five, something like that. I have one. It's in the other room. Okay. So, um, 50 creative exercises. So for instance, the five minute collages, white out, black and white, color charge, color plunge, image painting, strips. Uh, reassemble squares and rectangles and everyone is like on a, a, a just you know well here's this materials list tools and materials all the different materials he uses getting started decorative paper finding imagery and there's a lot of places online that has free copyright free now I have a ton of, of clip art books from back in the day but there's tons of it online too the creative process so it just shows you um, all the different he does a lot of vintagey looking stuff looks very vintagey and uh, so he just shows you a little bit on basic composition the rule of thirds all the different you know composition rules layering 101 um, Printing on tracing paper and how to do transparencies and transfers and all that. So he shows you basic skills and then he gets into the exercises. So for instance, here's page exercise one, five minute collages. He wants you to do collages in five minutes. He doesn't want you to dilly dally, don't mess around. Let's just get, you know, get crack a lacking. Y'all know the y'all know the deal here. Hang on. Y'all know the deal. <laughs> I gotta find it. Hang on. Oh, hang on. Y'all know what I'm going for here. Oh. 
you get crack a lacking. Or <laughs> so anyway, five minute collage. <laughs> And so he gives you, it's just a quick little, you know, little projects on just a couple pages. And they get more in depth as you go through. And like I said, we've done a couple of these on stream promoting his book. I'm all about promoting artists. So I keep my 2013 collage a day calendar in there because you know I wasn't going to use that. All right. Then, I've got a couple more here. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure on the dates of these. I think these two are the older of the two. So let me go back to these. This is Lynn Perella, and uh, these two are. And I'm, I'm, th I'm not sure if she has more books out now, but these are the two that I have by her. I think I have a, or there is, either have or there is, <laughs> uh, another one by her where she has a compilation of all kinds of artists that have sent in their examples um, I forget what's not artist studios or something like that, but she has another one out with a whole bunch of different artists. Let me see which one came first. This one is 2004. This one is 2006. So we're going to start with this one. Artist journals and sketchbooks explore and creating personal pages. These two, when these came out, first this one, and then I ran right out and bought this one when it came out, I thought these two books were absolute genius. I thought these were amazing. I know, Eileen, when you got these books, didn't you think, oh, wow, these were so Somerset Studio, you know, in a book. <laughs> So this one's core. They're both by Corey, published by Corey, and they're just. There's Tisha Moore, I think. Yeah, Tisha Moore sample there. Um, but there, it was just such eye candy in this book. Using words, building up your base, working in layers, working with photocopies. Just, I mean, just imagine never having seen this type of art journaling before. And it was like, you know, the Tisha Moore type stuff. And uh, it, it's just, you know, when you first see this kind, it's just like, it's just so inspiring. Not that you never did any gluing or painting or drawing in your book, but it's just so much packed into one. For instance, here, you know, the, remember when these little slide mounts were real popular, the little, uh, you know, film slide mounts? Well, here they have taken, how many did they do? Let me see how many did they do? 20? I don't know, maybe 60? 60 different slide mounts with a paragraph on each one and how they did it. For instance, let's just pick one like this one that's off. Well, I don't know. Um, well, I'll just read you one. A soft-hued painted background surrounds an antique nature print. The artist added tactile touch by carefully gluing tiny seashells on the slide mount frame with a small wisp of beige burlap forming the center element. It, you know, let me see where that one is. Uh, where's that one? Here. So it's like a little word picture for every little slide mount. You know, I mean, it's just so detailed. I don't know. I just thought it was really cool because um, they give a little description of everything. Create a, tab <clears throat> Create a tab by stringing beads on wire, loop and wrap it through the eyelets, and sew an acorn charm under the ribbon. Now, it's not like we have never seen or done any of this now, but when this came out, this was really innovative. Some of y'all will remember some of this and, you know, just the different types of, um, there's that one I just read with the beads and the charm. You know, it was very, very cool. I know everyone was amazed, right, Eileen? The idea of doing all this in a journal. And like I said, it's not that we hadn't done some collage or 
mixed media or anything like that but it's just the way they put it all together it was just like so colorful maybe that was part of it Eileen it was really colorful you know so much of it you know so all these different kinds of samples all right and then this one a to z creativity guide for collage and book artist okay so it's like goes through a to z and again look at the color i know i could i know i still think they're great too and um so uh, the contents are books and more exploring forms the right stuff surfaces and materials Chapter three is wordplay, text, type, and tales. Chapter four, eye candy and generating images. Chapter five are the master's artist workshops. And they have contributing artists and resources and all the other stuff. But what they did is they would take uh, each letter of the alphabet and do projects with them. Oh, it's just like P is for plaid, okay? I don't remember. Yeah, I don't think they were necessarily in alphabetical. I don't think they were in alphabetical order. They were just different using one thing to explore that letter. Like U is for unfolding. Look at that. There's U for unfolding. And uh, just tons of eye candy. If you never did a project in your life, if you just wanted inspiration, R is for red rickrack. T is for T, T E A. Uh, so you can just kind of see all the different tags. Just the ephemera alone, right? <laughs> oh, Janice, I'm going to be so broke. Well, you know what? You need to go into the book writing business. We're going to put you back to work, Janet. For those of y'all that missed it. <laughs> Where's Janet's here? Let me show you some of Janet's. Let me show a little piece. Here's some of Janet's little artwork right there. Janet Merle. So, yeah. We have to put you to work. Put you to work so you can buy more books, Janet. So anyway, guys, it, this is just tons of beautiful you know, eye candy. Q is for quirky. C is for color. Look, they did a whole color chart with all kinds of little do lollies and stuff. Yes, I said do lollies. So, anyway. Okay, then Exhibit 36, Mixed Media Demonstrations and Explorations by Susan Tuttle. This one is 2008. And it's a North Light F and W publication. You don't, <laughs> Jan. I don't want a job. <laughs> you know, you can sell. You can sell your artwork online. <laughs> you can sell your artwork online. Okay. So again, I'm trying to remember what all this one entailed. Using collage to tell a story photos. I don't know that this is much of a step out. It's more uh, showing that how they did their uh, step, what they did with the, the in, like here's Katie Kendrick. Y'all know, y'all probably recognize Katie Kendrick. Okay. I think she has a book out. I think I gave that one away, so I can't show it to you. Serendipitous solvent paper. So she has the method. So it gives you the method of, you know, written step out, step by step, but it's not showing you, you know, paint step outs. And it has a materials list. So it's just different artists and how they do their different little projects. Of course, a lot of it's Susan Tuttle. It's her book. Um, the Art of Play, Hand Drawn Touch. Um, <clears throat> You know, like I said, we all incorporate a little of this now into, you know, different versions, different ways. So it's a lot of different artists, uh, mixed media, collage. Uh, <clears throat> there's Claudine. And uh, how they do their projects. 
a lot of it's text heavy this one's very text heavy you have to really read about the artist their process which you know doesn't bother me but anyway and then there's some clip art back here in the back it says that you can use and then here are the 36 artist profiles so it gives a little profile of all 36 artists and the last one I have here is called scraps and I thought this was really fun and, and by the way I think I have one of the girls has passed away I thought I cut something out about that one one of the the uh, authors of this book has passed away but I don't know which one and you know you'd have to look, look that up but it's called scraps an inspirational field guide to collage and it came out in 2009 I think the last time we looked at it, one of the girls mentioned that to me and so it is let me see of the contents uh, getting started you know your different prod things flea market finds everyday treasures collage contributions store-bought supplies um, co do you use the original or a copy of your ephemera uh, create you know all that and that's chapter that's getting started and then putting things together uh, like telling a story form and color composition freeing your inner artist uh, two steps forward one step back when is a collage finished creating room to scrap or chaos versus order building your tool tool kit uh, working with paper all different kinds of colors scanning and printing stamping snip cut tear fold uh, you know patterns all that uh, 34 ways to jump start a collage, 19 ways to create pattern and structure, 48 themes in no particular order, show it off but preserve it well, and uh, yeah. So there's the names, hopefully it's focusing. <clears throat> and again it's a totally different style here's their desks kind of looks like mine <laughs> when I'm working oh if y'all uh, follow me on Facebook I did a folder a whole folder of my desks for two years I collected up all my pictures of my desk uh, photos and put them in a folder on Facebook so if y'all follow me on Facebook you can go look at my folder of I think I call it art table. I think I call it the art table. So, all right. So anyway, I'll just do a quick little flip here. It's a different style. I really like here. Look, they used a uh, one of those old calendars to do a little collage a day. A lot of girls do the, what are those called? You know, the little flip, the little uh, phone address things. What are they called? One of y'all know what I'm talking about. The little address cards, Rolodex, mini Rolodex. I don't know. They're the little mini Rolodex. And they do the cards a day, every day. And so they, they did the same basic thing, but they used their calendar pages. So, oh, thanks, Julie. Thanks for looking. Julie's, Julie's uh, she's a Pinterest queen. If y'all want to follow somebody on Pinterest and knows what they're doing and has cool stuff, go follow Topaz Pearl Girl. I think, is that your same name, Julie, on uh, Pinterest? Topaz Pearl Girl? She's got amazing folders. I, I try to keep up with Pinterest. I've got, you know, i got some cool folders, but not thousands and cool pictures like, like uh, Julie does. So here's different ideas. Look at all the ideas for um, ephemera. Just different, you know, game pieces, cards, matchbooks, old, you know, found relatives, little toys, all kinds of little. These are the kind of things that you can use in your collage. Yeah, it is Topaz Pearl Girl. And that's pearl with an E on the end. Topaz Pearl, P-E-A-R-L-E, girl, all one word. She's She's got some cool Pinterest folders. Just saying. Burn. Know what I mean? Burn. 
So anyway, uh, tags. This this to me is um, a real cool. I really like this book. I have to say, uh, lots of color charts, patterns, surfaces, different kind of books to use. This book is like real inspiring for ideas. You can just look at one page and just get so many ideas. You know, look, they bordered that whole border with vintage or, well, canceled stamps. Um, so it's it's just got lots of, you know, little composition tips. A lot of small pieces. You know, you can do art cards, uh, ATCs. You know, just, you know, look at it. It's just amazingly... So cool. Just for the ideas. Now, this is like, again, this is not a step by step. They tell you what they've used and, you know, a little bit of how they used it and color, composition, and that thing. But it's not telling you how to do these things like, you know, take a stamp, you know, glue it with this and that kind of thing. This is, you know, this just gives you more generalized uh, tip, tips and techniques. So I hope that those that wanted to see some art journaling and collage books got their, um, got their uh, fix, as it were, on uh, that. So hopefully that was something that y'all can go back and look through and uh, get more ideas and more inspiration and come over and visit us at Coffee and Art in the Morning. Um, and uh, if you follow me, then you'll be able to get email updates. I think you have to go in in your settings and check, yes, I want email updates when she goes live. Then you'll, you know, and I got to say, sometimes Ustream doesn't get it to you on time. There's been girls who go, oh, I got the email three hours late. Well, you know, that happens too, but at least you know, know where to find us. <laughs> And uh, one real quick, if, I don't know if, I, like I said, my chat uh, list has not been refreshed in four hours. So, but let me uh, find my, let me, let me promote Barb, one of our people here, one more time. This is her book, Creating Faces, Needle Sculpting from the Beginning. has nothing to do necessarily with art journaling. But I got to tell you, I got to do a shout out to our Barb. So if you want to know how to needle sculpt cool faces, she does do step-by-step step how to paint them. Look at those close-ups. So go over on Amazon and find Barb if you want to know how to make these lovely sculpted faces. And uh, yeah. All right, guys. Well, there we go. I hope y'all enjoyed that. I've got to go. I have been here since like, what, nine this morning? <laughs> Two shows. But I've enjoyed it so much. And I love hanging out with everybody and chatting when I when I look up a chat. <laughs> oh, a question. Uh, where did I, where do, did you get, no, I did not get a bookmark. I, well, I got to say, I got a, a card from Barb, which I keep in here, but no, I don't have uh, one of those bookmarks. <laughs> the girls in the chat know what I'm talking about. All right, so there we go, guys, and we will, uh, I guess, uh, see you later. And uh, if I don't see y'all before, I mean, I'll see you on Twitter and Facebook, but if I don't do a show before between now and Thanksgiving, hope everybody has a blessed, safe, and... Uh, Great family day, and uh, bye.